Hello folks, Abfielder here with another Minecraft tutorial and today it's another Lightmatica guide and we're going to be covering off features, tips and tricks, those kind of things, quality of life, make Lightmatica a little bit easy to use. If you're after very specific guides on Lightmatica then I have done several other videos, links will be down in the description or you could browse my channel. Without further ado then folks, let's jump into tip number one. Tip number one then folks is how to make these things easier to build in survival and this is the stem farm from Raiseworks and as you can see it's a rather complex build and imagine building this up following this in survival it's actually impossible to see some of the blocks and where they've got to go as you're building it so I can give you an absolutely fantastic great hint here that makes it easier to build from the bottom upwards in particular hit the M key for Mike this will open your Lightmatica main menu and then we're going to go to configuration menu up the right hand side there and then we select render layers which is already selected for me but I'm just going to flip through the menus and go back to render layers here and then where it says layers all change that so it says uh, layer range then in the min layer and the max layer set some new values so I've set to 50 to 70 and as you can see that's stopped displaying the top part of the farm now what you can do is hit the page down or the page up key and that changes which layers are rendered so if you want to be able to see these hoppers for example and how they are orientated do the page down until you can see them and that makes it much much easier to follow in survival tip number two is actually an inbuilt minecraft mechanic that still works with lightmatica if you push down on your mouse scroll wheel it will automatically select the block in your hotbar and allow you to place blocks much much quicker Tip number three then is a way to find out if you've got any blocks placed incorrectly. If you hit the M key for Mike and go into the configuration menu, then into hotkeys and scroll down. Once you get down to open a GUI schematic verifier, set yourself up a hotkey. I have used M plus V, Mike plus Victor. Configure yourself up a hotkey and then hit escape to come back out that menu and then press that hotkey to so M plus V for me and you get this verification menu. Now, it's better if you change the range if you're doing it layer by layer select render layers on the range and then do start verification that tells us we are missing one red concrete block that's nice and easy on this build because it's very very simple on this layer on more complex builds that gets very handy we hit hem plus v again just do the start verification button as you can see all blocks are now placed correctly before we do tip number four folks just a gentle reminder if you enjoy the video hit the like button and please 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 consider subscribing to the channel I'd really really appreciate that something like 85% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribers I'm doing some really cool content as you can see this is the base from the Minecraft SMP server that I play on the Strangecraft server and it is coming along nicely and it'd be lovely if you came and watched those videos as well so a big big thank you to anyone that does subscribe let's get on with tip number four then folks Tip number four then, as I remove the solid blocks just to demonstrate this a bit better, is a way of changing blocks. So for example, some of you content creators will use these colored blocks to make their tutorials easier to follow, which isn't great sometimes when you want to build it up in your survival world. So we can replace these blocks in the schematic. Now if you hold control and use the mouse wheel, you can see in the bottom left hand corner there, we've selected a rebuild schematic. If you also hit the M key, you can use that button in the bottom left hand corner to achieve the same thing. Next thing we need to do is set up another hotkey. So we go into configuration, menu and hotkeys. And then we scroll down. And when I eventually find it, we are looking for, he says, schematic rebuild, replace all. And we set ourselves a hotkey and I've set myself the left control key plus the H key. And what we're going to do is when we get the blocks, we want to replace the red concrete, for example, with stone. So we get that stone block and we put that into our inventory and we select it. We then hold control H and then we just simply place the block. And there we go. We have replaced the red concrete with stone in that schematic. Makes it a bit easier when you do the verify and you can do the same again with the purple concrete, the yellow concrete, you can see it replaces all the blocks. Now this will only do it for the layers that are rendered, but this just makes it much, much easier to follow the schematic if you are using a different material. Tip number five is a personal preference one. Now when I render up schematics, the blocks are fairly translucent, which means I can see through them. This is a personal preference thing, but you can change this. And if you hit the M key for mic, go into the configuration menu, Render blocks translucent, I have changed to true. That is set by to false by default, and I've just changed it back to false. And as you can see, I can no longer see through the blocks. If you're in a survival world and you're using bluish colored blocks, 
then actually it can be quite difficult to tell which blocks are real and which ones are part of the schematic, so I end up falling through the blocks. You can change how see-through a block is, so if you set it back to true, then scroll down a bit further, as you can see we're back on translucent, we go back down into that menu, ghost block alpha, and as you can see that changes how see-through the blocks are, and I set mine to around about 0.6, that gives me a fairly good visual indication of which blocks are real and which ones are fake. I'm just going to set this back to 0.6 now so I don't forget. Tip number six then is a way of quickly editing your schematics. Now this is a statue I built in my survival series, go check it out. But there was a scenario where I needed to move the torch to the opposite hand, to that guy's left hand hand, or right hand as we're looking at it. I didn't want to have to rebuild the entire thing. So there is actually a way you could do this. So if you hit the M key for mic, go into your schematic placements, and if you have more than one placement, just hover over it and it'll tell you which file it's loaded up. Hit the configure button. And then down this bottom right hand corner we've got like rotation and mirror, and in this scenario we want to mirror it. So if we hit that button we're going to have to hit it twice, and there we go, we flip the torch to the opposite side. We can just use these buttons here just to bring back the schematic to where we want it. And there we have it, the torch is in the correct hand. Now there are some oddities with this mirror image that you need to fix. Now if you just manipulate it like it's a normal block, make sure you're in mode number 9 of 9. Left click to remove the block, right click to place the block. Left click to remove a block, right click to place it. And I'm using the middle mouse button to quickly select that block as I mentioned earlier. And there we go, we have very quickly moved the torch to the opposite hand and fixed up those errors. Took a few seconds instead of rebuilding the entire schematic. Tip number seven then is around collecting the materials that you need for these builds. There's an easy way to find out what materials you need in stacks. So if you hit the M key for mic, go back into the schematic placements. Hit that configure button for the placement that you're looking at. And then in the right hand side, select material list. Now this is nice and simple, it's a fairly easy build, but like four blocks that's simple, you need four blocks. When you get above 64, if you hover over the item, it will tell you how many stacks you need. So one stack and then 20 blocks. The other thing that it'll do, so if we go onto the stone block, it will tell you how many shulker boxes you need. So we need on this one 25 stacks plus 42 blocks, and that equals 0.95 of a shulker box. So if you've got a really high volume material, it'll tell you how many shulker boxes you need. Really useful in survival. Tip number eight, we go back into the exact same place as before. So the M key for mic, schematic placements, configure, and then back into that material list. We can output these materials to a file. So we hit left click on right to file, gives you the file name. Rather than show you how to search for this in Windows, if we just escape out of these menus, hit the T key as though we were going to chat, you can then left click on the file name and it will open it up in your text editor for printing. The only thing this is missing is the breakdown of the stacks, but it's really useful. Tip number nine is that you can have multiple copies of a schematic loaded at once. Really useful if your favorite content creator is doing an area with multiple statues. So we would hit the M key, hit loaded schematics, and then on the schematic of choice, hit that create placement, that will create a second object. There we go, we can do some simple adjustments by hitting the M key, going to schematic placements, selecting our latest schematic, which is the bottom one, I'm going to give it a separate name here so we know which one it is and hit that rename button. Rotate it because it's kind of going to be in a pattern like this and then I can just move it on the X and Z axes like so until I'm happy. And there we go, we've got two schematics placed, I could now build those up. The last tip I'm going to give you for building in survival is actually the information in the top right hand corner. Now if you place the correct block but you place it in an incorrect fashion, it will highlight it in orange, and you might be wondering what's wrong with it. Well, rather than destroy the block, you can actually see in the top right hand corner, I will try and zoom in on this, that actually it's a, a sticky piston, that's correct. It should be facing up, but on the client, it is facing west. That is what's incorrect about that block, it's really useful for redstone. So if I go and place that now, you can see it's no longer highlighted orange because it is placed correctly. And we can see this if we were to build more layers, I can show you other components. Let's go up one layer, so we have this comparator. Again, highlight orange, and that's really useful because you might have components where in the schematic when you've taken it, the redstone might be powered. It will tell you what is wrong, and it might be something you need to fix, it might be something you just can leave alone, it's not actually a problem. Really useful information, keep an eye on that when you're building your schematics.
Anyway, folks, those are my favorite features of Lightmatica. I hope you found this video useful. As I said earlier, if you have, then please tick that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, folks, I'm Abfielder. That's all I've got time for, for today. Goodbye.